And y'all welcome Brandon Bayer to the stage. You are diverse, sir. <laughs> Hello. Well, it's the middle of the afternoon on the second day, so let's get some blood flowing. Everyone, please stand up. Stretch, just move around a little bit. All right. Well done, you may take a seat. You just released, released endorphins. You just hacked your body. What's your earliest memory of hacking something to make it do what you want? TIA calculator. Nice, yes, calculator. Awesome. Oh yeah, old school. <laughs> when I was 10, my parents gave me a four-wheeler for Christmas. That thing was a blast. But I realized it was too slow. And I found something that was holding the throttle from going all the way down. I didn't know it at the time, but my dad had put it there on purpose. Oops. I removed it, and my four-wheeler went much faster. I felt on top of the world. I had a grown-up version of that experience two years ago when I was a freelancer building apps with Next.js. I was so frustrated with the complexity and all the time it ate up. Because of my experience with Ruby on Rails, I knew it could be so much nicer. I kept hoping someone would make a Rails for React, but nobody did. I thought about doing it myself, but I would never made a framework or an open source project. But I felt such a strong conviction that this needed to exist, so I decided to figure it out. In February 2020, with a tiny mess of a prototype, I announced Blitz.js on Twitter. People went wild, over a quarter million people. I was on to something and I had to keep pushing forward. In that announcement, I basically said, hey, this doesn't exist yet, but I need your help to make it a reality. Over 40 people wanted to help. So in one sense, the community formed before the project. That's the beauty of open source. With that massive validation of a clear need and desire, I got to work with these guiding principles. Simplify decisions, minimize abstraction, maximize control. I listed all the ways I wanted to improve developer experience. The first was by using code scaffolding to create new projects. Rolling your own setup from scratch has benefits, but there are a lot of decisions you have to make and things to set up. You probably have a week or two of setup, but with Blitz, it's just two minutes. All you need to do is to generate a new app using the Blitz CLI. Blitz picks the best tools, like Prettier and Prisma, and sets them up to work well together. Once the code is generated, you have full control to adjust or tweak everything. Here's what Callie said. I just picked up Blitz for a client project because of the frustration over the amount of boilerplate and configuration we end up with with full stack projects. I'm a couple weeks in now, and I, find the, I like the library choices, and I find the documentation pretty awesome. Awesome. Next, I needed to create a groundbreaking authentication system. Uh-oh, says the guy who doesn't know how to make a framework. I had used third-party services like Auth0, but in my opinion, the developer experience was subpar, to say the least. Plus, using a third party for this essential part of your application introduces a lot of friction and frustration into the process. I'm a huge proponent of own your stack. I like to have just the right amount of maple syrup and butter. I believe essential features like authentication should be open source libraries that you self-host with your application. 
As I was doing research for Blitz Auth, I discovered this incredible blog post by Jose Villin. Jose is the creator of the Elixir programming language. What many don't know is that he's also the creator of Devise, the most popular authentication library for Ruby on Rails. Devise is a great comparison case because back then, Jose took the opposite approach as we are with Blitz. He abstracted as much as possible away, resulting in less control. And it worked. If you've used Devise, but if you've used Devise, you know that it's often a big mess and hard to understand exactly what's happening. When the Elixir Phoenix framework asked Jose to create a new authentication system, he said something striking. The best authentication system, the best, auth sorry, the best authentication framework is no framework at all. Whew, whew, glad I didn't throw my phone. When the, uh, that, so that resonated with me and increased my conviction around minimal abstraction and maximum control. So we designed Blitz Auth with a handful of simple imperative APIs plus code scaffolding. This gives you maximum flexibility to engineer your application as it needs to be. I want to emphasize that if you create a new Next.js app with the Blitz CLI, authentication is already set up for you out of the box. You can immediately log in, log out, sign up, uh, and for re reset your password. That's incredible. How does this compare with Next Auth? They were created at the same time but have very different philosophies. Next Auth is like Devise, abstracting away everything and only servicing specific things declaratively. This approach seems really great until you try to do something a bit more complex. For example, there's a common use case where an application owner needs to impersonate other users. This is impossible to build with NextAuth, as far as I can tell, but with BlitzAuth, it's like playing with your favorite Legos. So at that point, we had a blazing fast app setup and a very powerful authentication system. But we still hadn't addressed one of the most complex problems with React apps, how to get data back and forth from the server to the client. REST APIs are great for that if you thrive on uncertainty, inconsistency, and never knowing what to expect. To solve some of this, the brilliant folks at Facebook, or whatever they're calling it these days, created GraphQL. GraphQL provides standardization and type safety but it's a big company solution to big company problems and therefore requires a ton of boilerplate and configuration. Blitz needed a revolutionary new API layer. Whew, I needed to lay down in a hammock on an island in Thailand. I was, as I was laying there, I asked myself, what would this look like if React data fetching was easy? And I got this incredible picture in my mind of writing a function that runs on the server, and in that I would talk to a database, and then I would import that function into my React component, and it would just work. No REST, no GraphQL, no HTTP complexity, just my function and my data. Yes! With the help of other contributors, I made, we made this fantasy a reality and it's become the flagship feature in Blitz.js. Developers have told us it makes them five to 10 times more productive. Here's what it looks like. This is literally all the code for end-to-end -end data fetching in a Next.js app with Blitz. Mutations work very similar. This approach has many benefits, but I'll give you three. First, it provides end-to-end -end type safety without a separate code generation process. Woohoo! TypeScript users. Second, it automatically serializes and deserializes complex types like dates, maps, and sets. So you never have to worry about converting dates back and forth to strings. 
Thank goodness. Third, it enables full stack error handling. You can throw an error on the server and catch it on the client in a React error boundary. Whoever thought that would have been possible? To summarize, Blitz has three core modules. Code scaffolding, Blitz auth, and the API layer, which we call Blitz RPC. Altogether, these radically improve your developer productivity. It feels like magic, and our users agree. Blitz now has over 11,000 GitHub stars in just two years. Thousands of developers are using Blitz in production from side projects to startups to enterprises. Flick founder Andy uses Blitz at his startups and it's massively improved their productivity. Blitz let him double his output and hire front end engineers to do full stack work. And Blitz gave this English utility company a massive experience improvement over Next.js. And they're chuffed. I was more than chuffed. I felt on top of the world. Like when I was 10. And when I was 11 and 12. And hang on, some kids were riding their four wheelers in my field. They were going faster than me. They had more power. They were flying through the snow in front of me. And so here I come at full speed, trying to catch up, and I see that the path ends in a creek. And so I slam on the brakes, I'm sliding in the snow, I hit a rock pile going way too fast, and suddenly my four-wheeler and I are 20 feet in the air above the icy creek. I felt on top of the world, but not in a good way. I jumped off, landed in the snow face first, thankful to be alive. I looked over, and my four-wheeler is upside down in the creek. Last fall, Blitz was not upside down in the creek, but we had stopped growing. We realized we had taken away too much power and control from the developer. Blitz fully wrapped Next.js. So you either use Next, or Blitz. You had to use all of Blitz or none of Blitz. Some of you wanted a bit of Blitz. So what did we do? Well, my new friends helped me get the four-wheeler out of the creek, but it wouldn't start. I was sure my parents would kill me. My friends towed me back home through the backyard and helped me push it into the garage. After resting from all the excitement, it fired right up. My parents never knew. Hopefully they don't watch this. And that's where we are today with Blitz. Thanks to the hard work of Blitz maintainers, Alexandra and Dylan, I'm excited to announce Blitz 2.0. Blitz 2.0 is no longer a framework. Blitz is now a toolkit of modules for use with any Next.js application. Now you can pick and choose which Blitz features you want. They work well alone, and they work well together. We're adding lots more awesome stuff, like mobile app support, background processing, file uploads, full stack logging, and probably remix support. Remember how I was freelancing and was frustrated with all the complexity? Well, I solved half of the problem with Blitz. Blitz makes it easier to build apps. But then how do you deploy them? Vercel is great for front end sites, uh, but then you need a database and background processing. Uh-oh. Looks like I have a new project. And it's called Flight Control. Flight control makes it easy to deploy applications without sacrificing control. It gives you the same great deployment experience as Heroku or Vercel, but on your own AWS account, including great support for full stack applications. We launched five months ago, have high traffic production sites, 
and are growing very quickly. I invite you to learn more at flightcontrol.dev. And you can try Bliss 2.0 today by installing it with the alpha tag. And the beta release should be coming soon. To learn more about Blitz, including more technical presentations, check out blitzjs.com. You can also request free stickers from anywhere in the world. But for those of you here, I'll be out in the hallway to hand out stickers and answer any of your questions. So what have I learned over the past two years? That best practices are made up by people like you and me. They are made up by people like you and me. So feel free to ignore best practices and do what works best for you. And I learned that the founder myth, that you have to be special, is a trope. If you're sitting on ideas, give them a try. Create something that makes people's lives easier. Maybe it fails. Maybe it's a massive success. But you will learn something. And it might just totally change your career. If you've been working hard and feel like you aren't making progress, keep working at it. I believe that eventually things will work for you. The world needs you and your life experience. I have an intense amount of gratitude for my God and for everyone who's helped me in my career. So if there's anything I can do to help you, please reach out. I would be more than happy to help. Thank you.